Hey, hey, what is going on, Comic Book Familia? We have a special live show for you today. But we, before we go any further, I can't do these videos. I would say, or I won't do these videos without Peter, as far as interviews are concerned. How's it going, Peter? Not bad at all, mate. Not bad at all. I was very excited when you asked us to do this. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting into some good chat. And I know we're guest tonight is a bit of a Transformers fan. So, you know, that's yeah. right up my right up my street. So looking forward to delve deep into that. So before we bring him on, I just want to say how I met him. I believe it was at WonderCon or Emerald Con. You know how we always go through um, Artist Alley. So yeah. I'm walking through Artist Alley, and I didn't know Livio before that, obviously. And, and I seen his where he was at, and I stopped because I seen this IG88. And I said, dang, that looks so good. I wasn't sure if it was a, just like a, a picture of IG88, like a photograph. You know, it was so right. good. So I stopped and I started talking to Livio. And of course, I had a commission done by him. And I've done at least five or six commissions from him. And I have some of them here I'm going to show in a minute. But, right. you know, let's get let's get him on. Livio, how's it going? Hello, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on our channels. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, this is a first for us. We're, we're broadcasting on both of our YouTube channels at once. Oh, very cool. Nice. We, we weren't sure how, how it would work or if it would work, but it looks yeah. like it's working so far. So far, it, yeah. It's working. Wow. Yeah. Nice to it's meet you working. guys. Yeah. So before we start asking you questions a little bit about yourself, I want to show some quick um, um, creative books that I had done for you from you throughout the years. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me see if I can now make myself here. Um, how do we Efren's do Efren's always got loads of great sketch covers and things where we struggle to get them over here in the UK. Ah, oh, man. A Sentinels that he did for me. Oh, Efren man. likes to make me jealous as well. He, he, <laughs> he, he likes to just rub my nose in it. <laughs> That's you. stunning. Absolutely stunning. Do you colour them yourself as well when you're doing them? I do, yeah, yeah. Because quite often when I pick up commissions at conventions and things, it's quite often the black and white. They don't, they don't actually colour them at the time. So it's great that you colour them as well. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the artist. I know a lot of guys prefer black and white. I, I like the color. I like adding that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. This IG88. This is not the one that I've seen at his booth, but I said I had to have one of these. Yeah. Oh, man, you got to send me some scans of those. I haven't seen those in a while now. <laughs> <laughs> and I got two more. This is, Peter, you're going to love this one. I think I showed this to you before. It's uh, the Destroyer. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Destroyer. Yeah. Nice. I didn't know you had that one, Efren. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, maybe I didn't show it to you before. Yeah. And this is the most recent one that I had at WonderCon when I seen Livio. And I, Livio, I got this back already in like in less than like about ten days. It it was sent back to me already. It's the Iron Man one. Oh, nice! That's, wow, that's yeah. quick from CGC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's spectacular. Yeah. yeah. So those right. are the ones that are some of the few that I uh, got from him. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal right. work. Thank you. But let's see. Oh, Peter, you want to handle the comments? See, we got yeah, anything? sure, mate. We've got our bestest power. We've got good old Fuzzy Dunlop. Nice to see you, Fuzzy. I hope you're well, my friend. And we've got the Killer Comic Show. Um, see, so such a nice guy and a great guest awesome. to have. Fantastic. Well, thank you. So I appreciate nice. that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, nice. So, um, let's get out. Oh, anybody that's um hasn't that's um viewing it right now. If you have any questions, you know, put them in the comments, and we'll hopefully, you know, maybe we'll be able to answer them. But let's get forward with our questions so here's my first question when did you realize you wanted to be an artist you know pretty early on I mean I, I was drawing a lot as a kid like I think a lot of kids do and I I just really enjoyed it and I kind of I never got tired of doing it so that was always the hope was that you could make a living doing it you know yeah. and I think my parents were like well he's not spending enough time outside and I'm like well I'm just really enjoying you know <laughs> drawing and and yeah and I, I think they never really questioned it I, I knew I would I didn't know exactly if it would be comic books I kind of hoped it would be but I didn't know if you could make a living doing that so I ended up going to a school later for concept art and illustration I thought I would be in-house at like a video game company maybe and do comics on the side and then uh ironically I got hired by Jim Lee at Wildstorm to oh, be a wow. concept artist which was kind of funny because it all roads led back to comics yeah but, yeah so were you were you a comic book reader at the time then were you, you know when you started drawing were you big into comics back then yeah definitely like the big stuff for me the, the era was like an 80s late 80s kid so like um the first ninja turtles run kevin eastman uh jim lee todd mcfarlane their marvel yeah. stuff that was really my my era of comics like i kind of i mean i was like i was i was 10 in 1990 so when comics were really exploding and image was rising and you know it was a, a different market than it is today that was that was my era yeah 
Fantastic. Everyone, just before we move on to the next question, we've got a few comments here. We've got Andy from Perpetual Comics. He's having a bit of a pop at me there. Um, what's happening, folks? I'm just here to listen, and listen to Peter trying to pronounce Livio Ramandelli. Was that was I right? Was I near? Was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I have a bit of it. I, I can't normally say names very well. Um, much love from the Scottish one on the Killer Comics Show. Killer Comics Show is a fantastic channel over here in the UK. It's well worth checking out. Nice. And Fuzzy is just saying he saw your Mister Fuzzy's a massive Mister Freeze fan. Nice. He saw your Mister Freeze print today. Tremendous talent. Great to see. Oh, thank you. I love Mister Freeze too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we will have some slides too. We're going to show Olivia's work. I'm sure you don't want to see my face and Peter's face the whole time. So we will have some <laughs> slides pretty soon. All right, Peter, are you ready for the second question? Yeah, sure. Sure. And what, what you'll find is that Efren's kind of asked a lot of the technical questions, whereas mine's more nerdy geek based. Okay. Uh, so Efren, have you got the next question there? Yep, you're up. Okay, so I know you're a big fan of Transformers. I, I am as well. I'm a massive fan of Transformers. Loving the, the current Daniel Warren Johnson series. Um, and I know you worked an awful lot on the IDW line a little while ago. Who's your favorite to draw and why? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, I still got to say Optimus Prime. That character meant so much to me as a kid and continues to mean so much to me today. Um, I felt very honored to get to work on that character, specifically him. Yeah. But then my next like favorites are all Decepticons. It's like Soundwave, Devastator, ah. Shockwave. Those are my, yeah. my guys. I tend to like the more armored kind of hardcore characters. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Have you seen the um, Transformers one? Um, I'm about to watch today? that as soon as we're done here. I saw a clip of it, but yeah, I, I'm excited. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. We've also got Canadian survivors in the chat. Nice to see you, Canadian. Hope you are well. So, just to, just as a side to that, is there any character from the Transformers universe that you see and you think, oh God, I don't want to draw that one. That's going to be complex or that's going to be challenging. There's a couple. There's um. It's it's if you were doing like a one off sketch cover or something like a commission, basically every character is fun and cool yeah. to do. If you're doing a sequential comic book where you're illustrating pages, characters that have wings are hard because they block everyone around them. Yeah. So if you have a conversation with Starscream and like three other characters, the positioning of that is surprisingly difficult. I think people don't really realize like, or if you have characters walking down a hallway and they each have antenna and tails <laughs> yeah. it's, it's there's a lot of like figuring out the math of that that yeah. i think it kind of looks invisible but it's difficult yeah yeah i bet i bet thank you yeah. yeah yeah all right um up next with my second question has anyone influenced you as an artist oh there's a million i mean there's you know <laughs> jim lee todd mcfarlane alex ross when i was in oh. high school that was the first guy that i thought i might color my own work because i saw how much he was using color you know it wasn't just black and white but how much he contributed that kind of the atmosphere and then um i'm a huge fan of like ryan church and eric Tiemens, who were the concept art supervisors on the prequel trilogy their digital work had a huge impact on me and how their environments like really felt kind of real and interesting yeah. um and then ridley scott and blade runner like that's yeah. one of my favorite visual things ever like i learned so much from that to this day spotting the blade runner poster in the background yep. there yeah, they're right. um, <laughs> Thoughts on the sequel? What did you think of the sequel? I I liked I love Denny Villeneuve. I think I think he's a Dune two. I thought was absolutely oh, fantastic, phenomenal, fantastic yeah. movie. There was something about the second Blade Runner where I I I don't know exactly. Like I don't really feel like rewatching it that often, but yeah. I think it looks beautiful. Like I, and I liked it. I, I don't know what the issue is with me exactly. No, I, I'm, I'm exactly sure. the same. Yeah. I I, have you figured out what what it is about it? I, I can't. No. So I, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Blade Runner, and I sometimes think when you go to the sequels, I automatically go in with a bit of a negativity because it's like, oh, it can't beat the first one, you know? Yeah. But I've watched it twice, I think, and I'm 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 fine with that. It's not a one I would go back yeah. and revisit, you know? Yeah, I'm the same way. I don't, and I like I own it and everything. I just never really feel like putting it on, and I, yeah. I, I really don't because I love that universe. I watched the first one yeah. a lot, like yeah. regularly. But yeah. Uh, Andy from Perpetual Comics is just saying here, F Infestation number two, uh, issue one cover um, by by yourself is one of his favorites. I don't think I've seen that one. I'll have to have a look at that oh, one. It's been years since I've seen that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Peter, any comments or should we just go on to the next question? No, no, that, that's the, the only comment at the moment. Mate. Okay. All right, this is yours. Uh, sorry, I'm, I apologies. I've got I have got a comment from comment from Fuzzy, and uh, it's a good one. So if, uh, we've been talking a lot on our channels about some of the current books that are out there. I'm a big fan of, like I've said, Transformers and things like that. But as Fuzzy's saying, there are some great books out there at the moment. 
one of our favourites is um, something epic, and also beneath the trees. Have you read any, either? No, of those? I haven't. No, oh. what are they about? So, so something epic is by a guy called Simon Krudinski. Uh, okay. I don't know if you've come across his work, um, and it's just amazing. It's about a young lad who basically anything we imagine he can see, so he can see the imaginary world. Um, and it's about them become what they call an epic, which is which is kind of being able to control the imaginary world. It's it's just breathtakingly beautiful book worth checking out. Beneath the trees, <laughs> um, beneath the trees is like Sylvanian. I can't describe the art style. You'll have to check it out. It's like Sylvanian families crossed with Dexter. Have huh. you seen Dexter the serial yeah. killer? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah it's the, just the the most beautiful book. You'll, yeah. you'll read it's um oh, stunning really really good great picks fuzzy great picks um and fuzzy's saying you get as much enjoyment watching the sequel on mute <laughs> and talking about Blade Runner. it's extremely visual experience yeah. um yeah very cool very cool sorry my my question i have to be honest with you i hadn't read kill lock until Efren mentioned we're going to be doing this so i've blasted through the first series and i've just started the second series um and you know one thing me and Efren will say to you is we are always very honest. We don't we don't bullshit people. Um, I absolutely love the Kill Lock universe. Oh, it's you. it's just it's pulled me straight into the story. Thank um, you. the first six issues I read through in a couple of hours because yeah. I just couldn't I couldn't put it down. You oh, know? that's and great. Know, that that is yeah. wonderful here. Thank you. And I know Efren's Efren's the same. Um, I don't know if I meant to. But I absolutely love the artisan. He's just a sadistic little brat, isn't he? Yeah. He's just not a yeah. pleasant person. Yeah. But I absolutely love him. Um, and I can't read. We can't wait to read the second series, which I've, I've got to read now. Um, but tell me a little bit about Killlock and tell me about the inspiration behind it. Where, where did that come from for you? Yeah. So basically, it's a story about uh, four robots who are convicted of various crimes, and they're linked together by this invisible signal. So if one of them dies, they all die. And they're from very different walks of life. You have this hardcore kind of warrior robot. You have a sadistic engineer robot. You have an alcoholic robot. And then you have an innocent kid robot. So they're very different, like characters from four different stories almost put together and they have to take care of each other. So in the case of the artisan character, that, well, that one was, was really fun to work on because he basically is like, you can write a character with absolutely no filter at all. Yeah. And the meanest, most cruel thing, you can just have him say it. So it's very entertaining to, to write that character. But um, yeah, but it's been a real labor of love. I've absolutely loved working on it, and it's great to hear that people like it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want—I'm not going to spoil it for people in the chat who who haven't read it yet. I recommend you go and pick it up. But um, I, I was—you you kicked us in the gut on the last second of last issue with one of the characters and what happens to them because I just wasn't expecting that. I wasn't anticipating what would happen to the young child. Yeah. Um, oh, it was yeah. yeah, it was just 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 brilliant. Do you know what I want? I want a Transformers crossover. I have to say, you know, <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. that would be the artisan versus Prime. I think would be really interesting. That would know? be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Efren, you've read it, haven't you? What, what did you think? So I was about to say, um, the first few pages of Kill Lock, right from the start. I mean, what happens? I go, oh my god, I, I was hooked. Like after the first two or three pages. Oh, like, thank you. Dang, thank you, you just went right at it with the artisan. If I'm pronouncing his name right. Yeah. You know, he walks into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that was that was all my it was my idea was like a an asshole walks into a bar. He just yes. happens to be a robot. You know, and I and I just wanted to have like based on the first couple pages a bit of misdirection where they look like traditional sci-fi, and yeah. then the first thing he says is so not hopefully what people expect. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that really grabbed me. And another part that grabbed me for this whole series was their humanity. You know, these robots. And I kept on thinking, were they, you know, like a backstory in my mind, like, were they built by humans and somehow they got away from them? You know, but they were just all they've just been robots basically, correct? Yeah, in all robot civilization, there was never never humans in this world. There was organic life at one point, which the sequel kind of gets into a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't people, like people have just never existed in this yeah. in this world. But they do mention humanity throughout the series, you know, some of the words on. Yeah, you know, well, well, I wanted them to be very human. Like, they also talk yeah. about each other like this guy or whatever, you know, yeah. like or somebody, you know, they, they don't really talk like robots on purpose, yeah. you know. Yeah. What Peter said, sorry, Peter, um, the kid drew at your heartstrings, by the way, you know. So, yeah, that character really got to me. Nice. Yeah. Uh, just two quick follow-up questions. Is there going to be more in this universe? Can we expect some more? 
down the line? There, there is. Yeah. Um, I'm working on more of it now. I just, uh, it might be a little bit of a wait, but yeah, there's definitely like, cause I really want to this, I'm making a third one that I really want to kind of deliver on, on it. And it happened to me on the first two. There's always a bit of writing that I'm stuck on for a while and have to fix. And it's always in the middle. There's always something that was like a, a problem. Yeah. But um, but I kind of I like it. Then when you have the breakthroughs of writing something and you feel like you finally crack something and you like the solution, that's a wonderful feeling, even if it takes yeah. a long time to get there. Yeah, fantastic. The other only other thing that that I was going to mention was, and I don't I, I don't think it led there, but I kind of when we got the the artisan kind of explaining some of the background of what he'd done and how he'd set certain things up. I don't know why, but I was expecting to have a panel of him having somehow caused the accident that the laborer was involved with whether oh, he opened the door or something like that because yeah. the, the door shut didn't it or he, he he was drunk and he thought he'd shut yeah. the door yeah yeah i was wondering if it was going to be linked that the artisan had been involved with that as well um, no yeah uh, that's interesting i didn't think to do that i yeah. people have brought up a couple of things to me a lot of people thought the kid was hiding something that there would be yeah. a reveal that he actually was pretty bad that yeah. never occurred to me but that's an interesting idea yeah Great series. I really do recommend people in the chat pick up um, Kill Lock, the Kill Lock, because it is a stunning little series. Twelve issues in total so far, isn't it? Yeah. Six. Yeah. yeah. So before we go any further, let's pull up some slides and we can keep on talking, but we'll show some of Livio's artwork while we're talking. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, look at that. If you want to say anything about these slides, Livio, you know, jump on in. Okay. So sure. I'll yeah, these are two two sketch covers. That that was that Luke Skywalker Optimus Prime was fun. It's like yeah, getting yeah. to do the scale like that is always pretty entertaining. Yeah. yeah. And I love the Darth Vader one. That's an awesome one too. Man. Yeah, we were talking to, before we recorded about uh, collecting hot toys. I collect Star oh, Wars yeah. hot toys, so I have that Vader coming. Oh, nice. Oh, it's, it's, so yeah. So I've got the sorry, Efren and um, talking okay. toys. I've got the. Um, <laughs> got the empire strikes back anniversary one and i was i was toying with the idea of picking this one up as well just for that head sculpt because it's I, amazing i i'm yeah i have the empire one too i was debating i'm getting this one i was debating with the return of the jedi one too yeah, that yeah. the electricity which is amazing yeah. so uh livio shameless plug for peter if you're ever into toys he does a like a show at least <laughs> once or twice a month just going through all the toys that are coming out it's really oh, yeah. Good. yeah yeah so, so yeah i'll give you i'll give you a follow yeah what's the, yeah, what's yeah. the show called Triple G Comics, um, and it's um, Let's Talk Toys. Once a month, we'll do it. All right. I'm going to write it down. Just a, you know, shame. Hi, Jack. Peter. <laughs> all right, Peter, any comments, or should we go on to the next question? Uh, I mean, I'm all over that Prime. Do you know, I'm a massive Prime fan, as you know. So, yeah, I think that's a stunning one. And crossing Star Wars and Transformers is just a dream come true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. On to the next question. This is one of mine. Um, after you knew you wanted to be an artist, I mean, comic book, you know, drawings, did you go straight into comic books or do you, did you, or do you draw professionally besides comic books? Yeah, it was kind of, it was unusual. Like I went to art school and then I thought I was going to get staffed, you know, or hope to get a job as like a concept artist for video games or movies. And ironically, Jim Lee was hiring because at the time his company Wildstorm was doing the DC Universe online game, yeah. this giant project for Sony. Yeah. And so I was, I was hired to work on that game and do like environmental stuff. And that led me to doing comic conventions and that was, you know, artist alley and getting in that world. And then I was really, really lucky that an editor from IDW walked by and saw my transformers prints and gave me a card. And that led me to doing transformers for like 12 years. So it's been very lucky, very fortunate. Um, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that's basically, that's the story so far. Nice. Fantastic. Let's yeah, take fantastic. a look at another picture while we're talking here. Oh, it's all good. Oh. <laughs> I stare at these all the time. Man. That's when I, when I went to uh, Livio's booth. I was just like a kid. I was just staring at all this oh, artwork. Thank you. you know, like wow. So I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. I'm loving the Ahsoka, but I have to say the 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 color work on the surfer coming out of Galactus's palm there is just amazing. That's oh, um, yeah. that's beautiful. That's really thank cool. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Peter, you the next question. You ready? Yeah, sure, sure. So <laughs> I think we might like, talk about this. I, yeah, I know you're a Transformers fan. So yeah. Transformers, the animated movie, doesn't count because obviously that is a classic and we all love that. Yeah. Um the Michael Bay movies. What are your thoughts? And are you excited about the prospect of the, the recently announced G.I. Joe Transformers crossover movie? Uh yeah, I mean I, I, I if it's good, I love it. Like I thought I like thought the ending to Rise of the Beast was great. I think the G.I. Joe teaser was really interesting, yeah. you know. Um yeah. 
I do think it's kind of strange though, because it's like the only problem I have with it is like if Cobra, if you have Decepticons and Autobots, Cobra seems like less of a threat to me. You know, like if you have these massive war machine robots and then you have human terrorists, I don't know that there's a way to do it for sure, but that was yeah. just kind of one thing. I'm, yeah. I, I'm going proper nerdy here. I'm yeah. hoping there's somehow tie in mask into that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? If you had yeah. G.I. Joe or Cobra using the mask vehicles. What do you think of the, the earlier Bay Transformers movies? Because I am I'm a bit of a Prime fan. Yeah. And in my head and in my memory of the cartoon, Prime speaks in a certain way and he acts in a certain way. Yeah. And I didn't feel I got that with the Transformers movies. What did you think of them? Did you enjoy them? I, I enjoy parts of them. I, do, I also don't like the Optimus Prime that's kind of a murderer, you know, and, yeah. and, and it even was in Rise of the Beast too. He's he's so vicious that yeah. I always thought Optimus Prime was kind of like Captain America where he doesn't want to fight, but he will he'll kill someone if it's battle. But it's not yeah. like like when Steve Rogers throws the, the Hydra soldier into a propeller. I love that because he doesn't want to do that, but he just doesn't like bullies, you know, and that's he's a soldier. Prime. Yeah. yeah, he's a soldier. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. so I don't like when Optimus Prime screams things like give me your face and yeah. die and it just doesn't you know but having said that visually there's a lot of stuff in especially the first two or three that i like i think michael bay is really underrated for how mm. believable his sci-fi his cgi is i mean i think there's yeah yeah there's stuff in that first transformers movie that looks amazing today you know i mean his yeah. he really understands lighting and yeah. the highway battle in that movie like there's some really really cool stuff in it um, but yeah, I think Optimus Prime is just like, I, I miss the heart of that character, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And we mentioned earlier there that the Transformers uh, one animated movie trailer has dropped today. It's worth oh. a watch. It's really, really interesting. And um, they broadcasted it from space, which was interesting. That's I don't cool. know if you yeah, saw yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's well worth checking that one out as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I hope for, I, we get more movies in general. Like I thought, you know, I like I'm a huge obviously G1 fan. I think you are too. So yeah. I in, in like Rise of the Beast, seeing more of a classic G1 design on Prime yeah. was amazing. I mean, I just loved seeing him on screen. It was great. So yeah, yeah I hope yeah. we I hope they continue. I know they're changing it up with the Transformers One. It's Chris Hemsworth doing the voice, right? Oh wow. Yeah, you know? yeah it is. Yeah. yeah. Um it, yeah, and it, it's it's a shame for me. We've talked about this on another show that you know Peter Cullen is still around. So I'm yeah. sad that they didn't use him for that for that movie. Um yeah. but yeah as long as we're getting more transformers content i'm happy i would much rather i mean the best transformers content i think we've had is from bumblebee those first few minutes on oh Cyber yeah that was incredible you yeah. know give us a movie of that <laughs> yeah that was that was fantastic yeah. yeah yeah all right before we go on to the next question let's take a look at a couple more uh, drawings from nibio here here we go transformers and back to the future i have these books these oh, were awesome yeah. when they first those were out. really those are really fun to do like to actually yeah. Yeah, official Back to the Future stuff. Yeah, that is so awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Here we go, some yeah, turtle power. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it's stunning. It's stunning. Oh, I just love this. Lando. Lando Parisian, so beautiful. Thank you. Nice. I like the Ultron. Thank you. Very cool. There's that uh, Vader Dollars. again. Yeah, Stunning. that was great. That, that 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 moment's really cool. That whole scene. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it, for me. It kind of saved the series. I have to be honest. Yeah, it I was, was. I had mixed feelings on that series too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long does it take you to do a cover like that? These ones are pretty quick. Like these are, you know, especially when we're in a comic convention. These are like several in a day easily. Really? You know. Yeah, the the stuff that's more elaborate is like full body stuff or like that. On the far right there, that Galactus and Surfer that's all yeah. full environment. That takes longer because that's, you know, yeah. full figures, it's digitally colored, you know. Yeah. But um, but the heads are relatively easy. All right, Very let's cool. go on to the next Very question. Cool. I'll show some more slides in a bit. This is from me. Break down a typical day for Livio regarding when you draw or write a book. A good question. Um, one thing I like about being a freelancer is you can kind of flip your days. So if there's days where I not feeling it motivation wise you can go do your errands or whatever during the day and then work at night i like that that flexibility yeah my preference is to get up at like i don't know nine eight o'clock and then i'll work like i i work from home which i love because i can just put on a documentary sure. in front of me and it really appeals to me personally i just you know have no distractions and work all day and then usually what i'll do is i'll work on my like current paid stuff so commissions or whatever book i'm doing and then at the end of the day, I'll try and wind down with doing some creator own stuff. So 
whether it's like a third Killlock series or another book that is not necessarily on a schedule to come out yet. But that's the time I like the most is like those hours at the end of the day where I'm just really enjoying that. That that's my favorite part. Very so very cool. yeah, very cool. Yeah, I'm spying that sound wave in the top corner as well. There, that is phenomenal. Oh, thank um, you. Just amazing. We've got a couple of questions, um, Efren. Sorry, okay. uh, Fuzzy's just saying that he thinks the CGI in the first Transformers movie is a bit too crisp. It's not the Transformers I grew up with. Um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, Fuzzy. For me, at times, it all melds into one sometimes. Um, I, think the, I think the designs, yeah. like Yeah. I think they, they, they're sort of easier to watch at home, but I remember in the movie theater, it was hard to track what is happening yeah. sometimes because they're all, a lot of them are mostly silver, you know, yeah, uh -huh. it blends, doesn't it? It blends a yeah. bit. Yeah. Jack saying, how long would the, a piece like that Lando take, the Lando Calrissian? Because that was stunning. That, thanks. That was probably about, I mean, five hours or something, about like that. Um, five hours? Crazy. Yeah. So, it, they, they vary. Sometimes, especially if you have an idea, it's pretty clear. And then other times you're like, I just want to do a Lando print. And I haven't, because yeah. I don't have one of him yet. And then you struggle with what the idea is, you know, whereas some of the other ones, like there's a Vader on Hoth in the upper right there yeah. that one i had an idea very quickly about that i really wanted to do that shot and that angle but um but yeah it varies it, it just blows me away i mean obviously expert in your field but we um we do a little show on my channel once a month um called geeky art attack uh -huh. where myself and a few guys come together we, we often have artists on actually alex cormack don't know if you're alex no alex is a fantastic um artist um and basically Ephraim challenges were so he'll give her a subject so like one month we'll do amalgamations so he'll say what was it like mickey mouse crossed with a transformer for an example oh, that's cool. <laughs> and everybody on screen's got five minutes to quickly sketch something and i've wow. drawn like a stick figure do you know what i mean yeah, and then yeah. alex is pulling out images wh which you could have on a comic book cover it's just <laughs> the the skill you guys have is just absolutely amazing oh, um, jack Jack, who's a regular watcher of that show, is asking, "What do you use? Digital paint, pencil? What what's your medium?" I use I use all those. Um, so if you look at what's on screen, those three heads in the middle are just pen and marker. Uh, okay. Drawn traditionally, the Galactus on the far right and the Darth Vader above were colored digitally. So typically, my process, no matter what, is to start with pencil. So I lay everything out. Then if it's going to commission, I go straight to ink. If it's going to be a printed you know, comic book or one of those prints up there, uh, I just go straight to digital coloring and I skip the inking yeah. step. But yeah, that's generally. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I talked to Livio about your show, the drawing contest one, and I sent him a link to it. So next time we do one, Livio, I'm going to send you a link. No pressure. No, I'm down. Yeah, send me a link. I'll yeah. do it. We give yeah. you like about five minutes to draw. That sounds we, fun. We say yeah. five minutes, but myself and my and our co-host that I do with James, <laughs> usually talk for about 10 minutes. So, you know, by that time you're drawing stuff. But it's a really fun show. So. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, good. A good laugh. it's a good laugh. I can't take my eyes off that Vader at the top now. I, I didn't spot that. That's, um... Yeah. All right. Yeah, stunning. stunning. You ready? The next question? Yeah, sure, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. So we talked very briefly at the start a little bit about this. Um, I know that you're an action figure collector. I didn't realize you were as into hot toys, though. Um, but tell us a little bit, what's the latest action figure you've picked up or what's your favorite in your collection at the moment? Oh, uh, well, the latest thing I got into was the Mezco Marvel line. Have you oh, seen yeah. those? Oh, my God. Yeah. I bought like 10 of those in one month, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I bought the, the last thing, the last one I got was a Fantastic Four set of all four. Yeah, I and wanted that one. Are, it's, it's amazing. And it's such a perfect, like the costumes that they picked for that line. Or when I was a teenager, that's like my Marvel. Yeah. So the nostalgia is like over the top. But I... I love it. There, there, there's like six more of those I want right now, but that's, that's yeah. the newest thing is, you know, and then I have, like I said, I have the Vader uh, from Obi-Wan series on the way from hot toys. I just got the super battle droid from hot toys. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Have you got any of the, uh, the three zero transformers? I have an Optimus prime. Um, their yeah. sound wave. I know you like sound yeah. waves. Sound waves worth picking up because you get yeah. ravaged with them and it can actually, I, I want punch. that figure. Like, yeah. We were saying yeah. earlier, the bumblebee designs are so yeah, good. Yeah. 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 yeah worth picking up good stuff yeah. thank you good stuff yeah, yeah. Peter, you should be he should be on your toy show and not just watching it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know let's yeah. let's do that too. That sounds yeah fun. let's do that yeah. let's do that <laughs> all right uh ready for the next question uh, i think this is mine coming up here um how much time does it normally take for you to finish a book and how many books can you handle working on a daily basis good question um i would say generally about a month or so to finish a book my preference is to just do one book at a time, but that doesn't always happen. Like for right now, I'm doing a, 
I'm basically doing two different creator owned things at once. So I'm hopping back and forth. Now, the good thing is you kind of get a break, you know? So if you're getting tired, like one thing I'm doing is this World War II project. So if I get tired of drawing World War II stuff, I can move on to like sci-fi, which is okay. this other thing. So, but yeah, generally like my preference would be to just kind of do one project and really focus on it. But schedule and a lot of reasons like doesn't always allow for that. When you say it takes you a month to finish a book, how soon do you have to give it, get it to the publisher? Do they have to look it over like the editor and come back to you or the, the writer, you know, to, you know, change things if needed? Usually it's in steps. So you get a script. If it's something, if it's something I'm not writing, right? So if it's not Kill Lock, if it's like Transformers, you get a script, you do a, a layout based on that. So really rough, you know, shots. Then the editor and the writer can weigh in on that. Then sometimes you either send over pencils or you send over full color stuff. And then if any changes need to happen, that happens later. But generally you finish a book a couple months before it goes to, okay. to print. Cause they also have to solicit this stuff really far yeah. in advance, especially covers need to be done way early on compared to, you know, yeah. when they get, when they get shown. Okay. Peter, you ready for your question? Yeah, sure. Man. Yeah. All right, we're coming up. You're up. Okay. So. I told you all my questions are geeky stuff and Efren's are kind of the technical stuff of your, <laughs> of your work. Um, you're an 80s cartoon fan. Outside of Transformers, what cartoon property would you love to take a stab at? What do you want to oh, draw? All I right. Mean, yeah, like Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, any, yeah, any any 80s stuff. That really is my kind of my kind of jam. I was lucky because Transformers was my favorite of those. Yeah, yeah. So I got to work on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, any, any of that stuff would be great. Yeah. Um, I'm always surprised Defenders of the Earth hasn't had more love. I don't know if you remember that one with Flash Gordon Phantom. Yeah, yeah. That's, there was that's a couple a... watch like um like Thundercats. I also liked, but, but not enough to. I don't really have a passion to do it now. And yeah. then there was another one of like Silverhawks. I think it was the space one. Yeah, I never <clears throat> never got into Silver Silverhawks. That yeah. wasn't a one that I watched. But I Turtles we were, would be good. Turtles would be cool. I think when we were kids too, there was so few shows that we all kind of watched everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. the kids today are different because they don't, they have so many choices, but yeah, yeah, yeah. very true. Very true. Cool. Uh, we've got James Keegan. Nice to see you, James. Hope you're well. Uh, James is saying, God, that Boba Fett is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's spectacular, mate. Thank you. Hey, um, up next. So um, how does it work with a writer? Does he reach out to you or does the publishing company reach out to you to start a book or do you, or uh, do you reach out to writers? You know, how does that work? It, it varies. So if you're working on something like Transformers, we were all sort of full time working on it at IDW. So the writers were on it for years. The artists were on it for years. So we would just kind of work together, collaborate on it. If it's a creator owned book, sometimes it's like you meet the writer or or you reach out to them or they reach out to you. There's not really one set way. But generally with um, characters are creating yourself, you sort of independently uh, create the project, then you pitch it. You know, it's it's rare that a, that a company will be like, well, we want to do a sci-fi book. We're going to hire you to make a sci-fi book. They generally have to agree and green like the pitch that you put together. How yeah. hard is it to get into those pitches? How, how often are the, because from an outside point of view, it feels like breaking into something like Marvel, DC, IDW is almost insurmountable, you know? It is, it is hard because a lot of it is, um, it's frustrating because you'd be surprised how bad people are at actually getting back to you. Like I remember yeah. I pitched, I pitched something I didn't hear back for a year. Wow. Which wow. is just an email. I mean, that, so that was like really frustrating. Like the kill off too. Like I pitched it to a couple different publishers before IDW. And one of them said, this has happened more, more than once to me where they were like, we like this project, but it's too similar to a book that we already said we do. So even if it's a really superficial similarity, they, they still will turn down a book. And that's kind of hard because a lot of stories share certain templates yeah. just because that, you know, a mystery or whatever. That's just the nature of storytelling. So if you pitch a mystery and they already have a mystery, you know, so that yeah. that stuff is hard. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. Let's take a couple. Of, let's take a look at a couple more slides before we go on to the next question. Uh, I think this, look at this. See, this is what I mean. Just staring at this artwork, I was like, you know, wow. I mean, that's that's it's obscenely good, isn't it? <laughs> that's, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, that was the first in my uh, Star Wars series of prints I did. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> outside of prime sound waves me next go-to guy yeah, I mean, yeah 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 they're stunning 
I love this Grogu Venom. I'm, I'm assuming some uh, person, this is a commission. Somebody just asked you to do this? Yeah, I've been working on um, Whatnot. I don't know if you know the, the, the yeah, new Whatnot yeah. oh, yeah. is a really popular art auction yeah. app. And Venomized stuff is really, really po popular on that. Like a lot of people request that. So Are you, are you on Whatnot? I work, I have one. I don't really use it because they work with a company called SMZ. Okay. So yeah, so I, but I stream with them all the time. Like I'm going to go out there again in a couple of weeks. They're based in Las Vegas. So okay. I, I stream with their channel a lot. Very cool. But, uh, and that Batman, I recognize it. That's a hot toy, isn't it? Is, there's a hot toy I version of that, his, I think. It's his anti-freeze armor, I think. Yeah. I remember yeah. That no, yeah. I think the, I think hot toys did make that. Yeah. But, Amazing. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> It's just, it's just beautiful. No, oh, thank yeah. you. Gosh. Yeah, stunning. Thanks. Stunning. So I've got one more slide before we go on to the next question here. Yeah. Very cool. I love the Galactus and Surfer one. All right, this question is mine. Um, when you're at conventions, does it take up all your time or do you also have time to work on your regular books that you are publishing? Because when I went to live you, I talked to him for a while and you know we, we talk and we see you know which um character i want drawn on it and besides that you're such a nice person and i told this to Livio. Oh, nice. when you talk to an artist they take their time to talk to you yeah and you know that to me as a you know person who buys stuff you know that means a lot just chatting with you you know beforehand oh that's great yeah I and mean, why, why i really like i really enjoy talking to people at conventions because you sort of you draw this stuff in a vacuum and you don't know who's actually seeing it or buying yeah. it so to actually meet people is really it's really enjoyable for me yeah um, in terms of the question, yeah, it's it's really conventions are pretty con time consuming when you're working one because you're basically working all day long and then at night you're either tired or you're unwinding for a little bit or you're finishing commissions for the next day. So usually unless I have really have a tight deadline, I don't do any other book work during a convention. I just work the convention and then I just resume my normal work, you know, when I Monday after the show. How many conventions do you usually do in a year? I've cut it down a bit because I've been doing more whatnot stuff. That's kind of been right. nice. But I, at the height, I was probably doing 20 a year. Wow. So I wow. would do like two a month, three a month sometimes, which is, that's a lot. I remember one time yeah. I, I did one in Japan. I flew back to Los Angeles. Then the next day I flew to Michigan to do one. Oh, wow. And that, that pace is a little brutal, you know? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be at a uh, San Diego comic con? I'm going to be working whatnot there. I'm not going to have a table this year, but I'm going to be working on site with, uh, SMZ. Is that, is that a vendor? SMZ? SMZ is the, it's on whatnot. It's the top, uh, art account. So one of my buddies runs that. And, uh, so yeah, they'll, they'll have, they'll have a presence at the floor last year. I did it and they actually had a whatnot built like a installation outside the convention. So you could walk in. It was like a really cool. Oh, museum. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. You can see people streaming live. So, so will you be doing any commissions? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, also anytime anyone watching too, if you'd like a commission, you can email me. Yeah. It doesn't have to be during a convention. I'm happy to mail it out. Oh, yeah. By the way, I, like I said, some of these books that I showed at the beginning, those were books that I sent directly to Olivio. And there's a forum if you if you want to reach out to Olivio on, on Instagram. Um, there's a forum that CGC can send to you and you send it forward to the uh, to the artist. And then, you know, he signs all the paperwork and it can be verified as a yellow label. Yeah. Yep. All right. Speaking of conventions, Peter has a question for you. Yeah, just before we get to that, we'll just jump to the chat. And and Efren, you know I get upset when you talk about San Diego Comic Con. That, <laughs> that's not fair. That's not fair. What am I? Have what am I? Been? No. No. Nah. I've never been I, to I any. Say, brace yourself. It's, yeah. It is not an easy one to do. No, I've never not. been to any US con. I'm, I'm oh, desperate yeah. to get over to to the states and do a con because I was yeah. I was over here just aren't comparable. I don't think to to what Efren describes. You know yeah um so yeah i'd love to do san diego or new york comic con or, or one of those yeah um james keegan's asking is there a franchise you haven't worked on that you'd love to oh it's there's millions i mean like i'm a huge robocop fan i think robocop would be, that'd be really i think you could do a cool comic um yeah yeah i mean x-men batman there's there's a lot of stuff i mean I'm, these days i'm pretty focused on my own like kill lock and my own original stuff that i'm, I'm really yeah. into but but it, I mean, just the stuff I grew up with, like I was a huge Spider-Man Venom fan. So to do something with that would be cool. Very cool. It, it's criminal that we've not got a decent Robocop series or film out at the moment. I didn't mind the last one, mind. Michael Keaton was in it, so it was a winner. Yeah. Um, but the original, have you got the Hot Toy Robocop? Oh yeah, I have, I have that, I have the Ed 209. 
Yeah. <laughs> Not got the Ed, Ed tool name, but yeah. Very I cool. have both Robocops. I have the one where the he's new... attacked and one where he's all battle damaged. Those yeah. are those are some of the best too. They're all yeah. like die cast metal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the die cast ones. The Iron Man die cast ones are very cool as well. Yeah, they are. Um, We've got Kenneth. Nice to see you, Kenneth. Thank you for joining. Jack's just absolutely astounded by your artwork. There's no <laughs> way that Darth Maul took five hours. <laughs> um, good stuff. Right. So, UK convention scene. I talked to you briefly at the start there about Thought Bubble. It would be amazing to get you over to any. Have you got any plans to try and get over at some point? I would love to. I've done some Transformers conventions in Birmingham. Yeah, uh, which I loved. You know, um, I, I love the crowd there. The people are great. Yeah. Uh, I love the UK. I would love to visit more. Um, we'll see in the future. A lot of it's just kind of the, the logistics of traveling that far, you know. But yeah, um, yeah. I'll drop I'll drop you a link um, after this for the thought bubble because we get quite a few big. James Tinian quite often goes to that. Jock, cool. do you know Jock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot a lot of those guys. Um, Scott Snyder uh, tend to get the thought bubble, and it's a much more. Um, it's much smaller than you're probably used to, yeah. but it's a much more intimate convention with lots of sketch and lots of artwork going on. Really That's worth, right. really worth a visit. Um, I did, uh, the, the, I did uh, auto assembly it was Transformers Con. Now it's TF Nation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. TF Nation. Yeah, like that. That was the same vibe where it's like it's like really kind of it was a smaller yeah. crowd. Everyone's in the same host hotel, and I I loved it. It was a blast. So I've never done Transformers Nation, but it's not far from me. So me and a pal. Oh, um, you should are, do it. Are, are going to go and do that one and um, hopefully this year or next year oh it's um, fantastic yeah <laughs> <laughs> phil um yeah i have a habit of buying people drinks when we go out so phil say i'll buy you oh, a shot. Do it. That banana good. shot yeah that's my <laughs> my, my thank you to you <laughs> cheers next question from you from me uh, this is a, a question i just thought of well not, this is a comment um i love all your artwork but wouldn't you know that just your, your robotic figures to me just really stick out? Like I said, when I first was, I think it was an Emerald Con, I was walking by your booth. I seen an IG-88 and it just made me stop in my tracks. I mean, you do have a certain, like, I mean, passion for robotic figures. When did you know that that was, you know, wow, I'm, you know, I'm really good at this, you know, not to give yourself props or anything? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, like, probably just literally watching Transformers as a kid, you know, I remember we talked about that original animated movie. When I saw that as a kid, it felt so real to me, you know, like yeah. the, the close up of Megatron's face where it's all cracked and stuff. As a kid, that looks like you're looking at like a photograph. It's amazing, that level of detail. And that had a giant impact on me. And then, um, yeah, and then I think artists just eventually kind of find what they're drawn to. Like, like I have a lot more trouble drawing people. Like if you ask me to draw like Wonder Woman or Superman, that's mm. much, much harder for me because okay. it's sort of like, it's just a face, you know, yeah. whereas guys that are really good at that, artists really good at that, I think have more trouble with robots. So I think yeah. it's kind of rare you find someone who's good at everything. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And I think ju just jumping on the back of that, Efren, um, you're absolutely right. We're focused a lot on your artwork here and how it absolutely stunning it is. And it absolutely is. But actually, you're a really, really talented writer as well, because Kill Lock yes. had a lot of emotion, a lot of punch to it, some surprise, great dialogue. You know, you. funny. So you're a you're a multi talented chap, really, aren't you? It's uh, it's right. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> impressive. No, I, I I'm just glad people liked it because that was the first thing I ever wrote, and I just yeah. wow. I just I mean I'm a huge studier of storytelling. Like I one of my favorite things to do is to listen to um audio commentaries of movies while I'm working. I just absorb that stuff like all day long. I had listened to that and like learned from those guys who've made yeah. amazing stuff and. And yeah, and I think just um, I've really enjoyed storytelling in general, like just whether it's it's art or, or writing, you know. Going uh, back to Killlock really quick. What I liked is at the at the end of each book, you gave like the history of all the characters. I really enjoyed that because a lot of comic books don't do that. You know, they just you, you just try to guess who exactly who these characters are if you don't know them. And that's yeah. one thing I really appreciated. You know, just want to put that in there. Thanks. Yeah, I wanted. I thought it was could potentially interesting is that you kind yeah, of discover them as you go along what their yeah. path was. All right, I am next with this question. Um, do you ink or, or color your own books, or do you have someone do that for you? No, I, I do it myself. Yeah, there's been a couple things I've worked on where someone else colored it. I didn't. I don't really love that because so much of what I do, I, I'm thinking of the color when I'm making the actual like layout. So it's really hard for me to just hand over something black and white and let someone else do it. I've colored other people's work and I kind of enjoy doing that more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Nice. All right. This is Peter's question. 
just yeah, before we go to that, oh. we've got um, Phil from Phil. Um, Kill Lock was superb, um, but I've yet to read Artisan's Wrath. I need to get onto it. Uh, right. Phil, I've just i've just read kill lock mate and it was stunning we've been talking about that earlier but i've not read artisan's wrath yet so if you want to phil does a lot of comic book reviews and um, phil if you want to get in touch and we'll do a review together on artisan's wrath that would be cool mate we can do it on my monthly comic show but yeah lots of praise as soon as we said we we're doing this interview with you a number of people messaged and said loved kill lock oh great um, thank you everybody thank you that means a lot Okay, you kind of answered this earlier on, but I, I got incredibly jealous when I saw some of Efren's work, work from you. Um, and when I discovered your Transformers work, I got even more jealous. So I'm UK based. How do I get a sketch cover from you? What's the process for getting a commissioned um, blank cover from you? Okay, yeah, it's, it's simple. You can uh, you can either DM me directly on Instagram, just leave your Amadelli, or you can email me. My email is also on there. Um, with sketch covers, sometimes you have to send me the cover cause I don't really have all of them out on hand commissions. So just on Bristol board, I can send that to you, you know, at my, myself, but, um, but yeah, I can ship all over the world. So just, uh, shoot me a message. Commissions are open now if you want anything. So, yeah. Yeah. so what, what we'll do, we'll stick um, all of those links in the description of this video. If anybody wants to get in touch, please, please use those links. I'll definitely be getting in touch. Uh, and Efren, you said there's a way for it to get them CGC graded. Um, yes. Um, in years past, when I've done some commissions with Livio, um, there's a form. If you ask CGC, you know, they'll email it to you and then you forward it that to Livio. And I don't remember if you sent it back to me, Livio, and I sent it to CGC or you sent them directly to CGC. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I can't remember. I've done it. I, yeah. I've done it. I, there has been times I've sent it directly to CGC and other times just back. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying you have to do that. <laughs> I'm not putting extra pressure on you, but, you know, this is an option. So. Uh, okay. okay spot on let me see here i think we got two more questions and after that we'll show the rest of the slides okay uh, do you have a specific character i think that might have been asked uh, do you have a specific character that you haven't drawn professionally that you would like to take on i think you mentioned robocop correct? yeah I think, yeah robocop i mean i'm loving x-men 97 that series has just oh, reinvigorated yeah. my love for those characters so much so yeah i mean any of this stuff i kind of grew up on it would be cool to take your your own like stab at it Right. Love to see your take on Invincible. He's one of my favorites at oh, the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. Be very, Invincible versus Omni Man battle would be no. interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool. Any comments, Peter, or should we just go on to the last? No, one? no, no comments at the moment, mate. Okay. He might not be able to talk about this, but we'll ask. You'll ask him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I kind of feel like, and again, I don't mean this in any, any disrespect, but I kind of feel like I'm just discovering you and your work. Uh -huh. Um because of kill lock and then because of the idw stuff and i'm excited to see what's what's i want to read more so either what have you got out at the moment that people can read or what's coming next that we can we can delve into yeah um thank you for that um yeah so i'm working on more creator owned stuff i can't unfortunately really talk about what it is so sort of like there's been a lull now of me making this stuff so then hopefully it will be either yeah. later this year or early next year get released but there is a there's a sci-fi world war ii thing i've been working on and um and then the kill lock universe i'm continuing to like build that out so brilliant brilliant yeah. so lots of good stuff coming yeah definitely excellent that was the last question and we're almost done but let's take a look at a couple more slides from the if you want to comment on them okay oh here's you you working <laughs> oh yeah that was yeah that that cover was signed by peter collin christopher lloyd michael j fox That's oh wow. Crazy. wow yeah nice yeah. I bet you were nervous signing that one. Though. I was, you know? yeah, for sure, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Cool. Love it. So this is actually, obviously, it's one book. It's the front and back cover, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a sketch cover, yeah. yeah. Very nice. And I think we have one or two more. There's some more Transformer stuff. Yeah, the Devastator was signed by the voice actor of the G1 Devastator. That's stunning, the Devastator. <laughs> Devastator. I've just picked up the G1 set for the Devastator. I think I got them from a, a toy, oh, yeah. toy, toy sale. I loved that toy back in the day. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the last picture. Yep. So on April 30th, we're going to be doing another interview with uh, David Pepos. He's right now, he's writing uh, the, devil, the Devil That Wears My Face, and he's uh, writing uh, Punisher. 
the yeah. Marvel comics. So that's coming up on um, April 30th, guys. So that's the last one. Any other comments, Peter, before we say goodbye to everybody? No, I just want to say a massive thank you. That's been really, really interesting. Um, your, your artwork and your writing are absolutely stunning. Thank and you. I really would encourage everybody in the chat to to blast your DMs with with lots of requests for for um, commissions because your work is amazing. Um, and you, as you know, as a big Transformers fan, and I know Doctor Von Hoot is in the in the comments there. He's a massive Transformers fan as well. I've no doubt there'll be some Transformers one blank covers coming your way um, to get some sketching on if if you are able to. Absolutely, yeah. Totally. One more thing, folks. Um, I know when you if you ever see Livio at a convention, say hi to him. He's such a nice guy. And, you know, pricing wise, I'm not going to talk about how much everything costs, but his pricing is very fair. And I mentioned that to him. And I told him I appreciate that, you know, as a collector, you know, so. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. It's been great to talk to you. Yeah. All right, guys. Until next time, you know, we'll be back probably Saturday, you know, talking on Peter's channel. But everybody be safe and take care. Bye. Take care.